uh, the next semester may be open next year. Maybe they open okay. next year. Okay, okay, okay. And now there are some some requests from the private university, you know, because they want to open, otherwise they have to close. You know? Okay, okay, okay. The government university is still okay, but the private university are all complaining now. Are... Okay. Uh, <laughs> here uh, it is very blinking. Uh, we don't know uh, when this is going to be over, or whether to go away with the next semester classes seriously. Yeah, uh, yeah. Really, we do not know. Uh, a very different Look, kind of situation. The worst affected is the, 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 uh, this, the university. Yes, in, in America, because they have the ruling that you have to have contact hours. So those foreign yeah. students have to go back, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's quite, you know? Yeah, we are all time bound, you know, scheduled bound, time bound universities mm -hmm. and all. Mm -hmm. uh, we have syllabus curriculum to be finished on time. Yeah, yes. If it is missing, if it is missing, uh, the career of the students itself is going to be uh, incomplete, uh, uh, very much disturbed. Uh, that is a different disturbance. You can't compare it with anyone else. True. <laughs> a student uh, completing uh, some uh, 10th standard this year yeah. uh, uh, has to definitely go to the next to the next standard immediately in that yeah. year itself. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, uh, it will seriously hamper. Uh, uh, his opportunities, his uh, future as a student. But but one thing, uh, my 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 son during the uh, we have a MCO uh, the the lockdown period for three months. So during oh. the lockdown, they, 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 my son doesn't go to the the, the school, but they, they start online business, you know, selling things, selling, they're okay, making okay. money. Yeah. You know? <laughs> okay. Okay. Nice. Uh, <laughs> I think one they thing have become, yeah, they, have, they have become entrepreneurs. Yeah. <laughs> online. online. <laughs> Online entrepreneurs. <laughs> I'm on an online session. Please call me later. Okay. Eighty participants have come. It is good. Okay, sir. We will start, sir. Yeah, we will start now. G give me two minutes. I want to go to my uh, kitchen to get something to drink. Yeah, yes, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Please bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it.
ओके सर ओके ओके सर वेलकम वेलकम गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू मेनी फैकल्टी ऑफ कम वी हैव अवर गुड स्पीकर डॉक्टर कमर जुमान सोपियन हु इज द डायरेक्टर ऑफ सोलर रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट मलेशिया गुड मॉर्निंग सर morning good morning uh, good morning <laughs> i extend a very warm welcome to all of you thank you thank you it is it is a different situation uh, where uh, we are held up in our homes uh, because of this uh, covid 19 problem mm -hmm. and in this situation uh, one very good thing has also happened uh, that is a complete refreshing of our uh, beautiful planet earth yeah yes uh, yeah clear refreshing is happening which we are uh, Uh, visibly uh, able to see but mm -hmm. we are not thinking about it mm -hmm. even though people are dying in this adverse situation a great good thing that has happened for the whole planet is uh, no pollution at all yes uh, absolutely nil pollution now uh, that is the situation uh, which the planet will be uh, longing for uh, we know uh, how the clean energy is very important uh, how uh, adverse effects we have seen from fossil fuels Mm -hmm. so uh, for a country like india uh, solar energy is uh, not only very clean and, uh, and abundantly available uh, it is really convincing it is really convincing it is going to be present for the uh, whole period in a year uh, you, you know uh, just four days back on 10th of july uh, in madhya pradesh our prime minister was inaugurating reva reva solar power project mm -hmm. reva is uh, supposed to give uh, something around 750 megawatts of energy uh, it's a wonderful project which has been taken uh, they say uh, it is one of the biggest in asia mm -hmm. so you can uh, very well understand how we are uh, heading towards uh, solar energy applications mm -hmm. uh, basically we know uh, the different technologies like uh, solar water heating uh, solar air heating uh, pv thermal systems Uh, with all these technologies how we are going to differently harness the solar energy that is uh, that is the uh, different matters which we have to know uh, hope we will be getting uh, many answers uh, in this uh, four days fdp program along with mr sopian uh, uh, another professor is joining from kasagistan university erzan mm -hmm. uh, is joining uh, later mm -hmm. and uh, a research scholar is are going to join us from uh, nit calicut mm -hmm. and our own uh, solar expert uh, dr mohan raj is also there mm -hmm. i hope our uh, audience will be getting uh, many answers for various questions so uh, that is the future which we have to think of so i welcome uh, all of you for this wonderful uh, fdp uh, now let me hand over to dr mohan raj So welcome to one and all present here, uh, present in this group. Uh, so now I would like to uh, welcome our, uh, sorry, uh, I would like to introduce our chief guest, uh, Kamar Zuman Sofian. I think uh, there is no much introduction about uh, Kamar Zuman Sofian because he has uh, contributed a lot in solar energy. Uh, I suppose if any is, anyone is working in the field of solar energy, definitely he can uh, refer to his uh, publications or research contributions because he is in the Done more than 500 research publications, especially in the uh, reputed uh, high impact factor journals. So uh, we, we have a uh, uh, Professor Kamar Zaman Sofian has visited our institute for the uh, last two three times. We have visited our institute, and he is uh, giving a uh, gave a good lectures about the solar energy. Uh, regarding his uh, qualification, he is a B B mechanical engineering from the University of Iskand uh, during the year 1985. later he did his masters program in energy resources technology from university of pittsburgh during the year 1989 and later he did his phd in uh, uh, pvt collectors during the uh, during the year 1997 from uh, university of uh, miami so all these three degrees from uh, uh, united states and he presently is a director of uh, solar energy research institute in uh, university of kebaston malaysia and he has contributed uh, i think uh, He has uh, guided more than uh, 60 research PhD research scholars and more many uh, uh, postgraduate scholars, and he has published uh, more than uh, 500 research articles, especially in uh, uh, reputed journals like uh, Elsevier uh, and uh, Springer and uh, 
reputed by policers. So now I welcome uh, Professor Kamarazman Sofian to take the session. Well, welcome, you, sir. Thank you very much, Professor Mahan Maharaj. Uh, yes, yes, thank first, you, sir. Uh, first, first and foremost, I would like to uh, thank you, the organizer, and uh, the, the, the the Hindustan College of Engineering and Technology is close to my heart. I visited the place two times, yeah? <laughs> and I enjoyed it very much. Yeah? And uh, I will now begin the presentation. Yeah? Um, and uh, I will give you the introduction. And then I will go through the uh, so solar cooling technology. Some I, I have done. Yeah? Uh, some I've done for it. And, some I, and then I would like to also uh, 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 basically uh, explain eh, uh, the uh, basic technology with respect to this uh, uh, this this uh, this this system, eh? and then I, finally I will conclude. Now, um, before that, eh, I just uh, this is deep in my heart eh, because we went through a lot of troubles. Eh? We went through a lot of this um, this now new norms, eh? and I I would like to advise, eh, for example. Uh, us to to maintain our social distancing, you know, and then to wash our hand uh, frequently and to wear masks wherever we go. And um, it is troublesome to see yeah, that this happened to many, 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 many of our friends. And some, for example, some of the conferences that we are supposed to do in 2020, uh, we, uh, we have postponed it and probably some of them some of the conferences, conferences has been just an online conferences. It's not it's not it's not the same. Yeah? As, as opposed to conferences that where you, you you go and meet colleagues and where you discuss ideas and so forth. I will uh, first of all, I just like introduce my institute. Uh, I am located in uh, in the about twenty kilometers from the capital Kuala Lumpur. We were established in the year two zero zero five, and to date, yeah, we have uh, graduated more than uh, sixty PhD students. Eh? Um, and um, uh, this is our research complex. And the uh, area of research uh, that we uh, are involving in is our advanced solar cell and PV systems, advanced solar thermal, um, materials in building, low energy architecture, uh, advanced ecoscape, advanced power system, biodiesel, uh, heat transfer, yeah, advanced heat transfer uh, in energy systems, and also uh, analysis of uh, renewable energy impact. Uh, and, 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 uh, before I continue, uh, can you hear me all? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, okay. sir. Okay, okay. And the you PowerPoint. Are very well heard. And, the, yeah. and the PowerPoint, too, right? Okay. PowerPoint, we could not be able to see. Oh, you cannot? Yeah, we are not able to see the PPT now. Uh, before that, you can? Yeah, before that, I was saying. But what do you see now? Uh, just your name is coming. You are. Uh, I, uh, I, I I'm now going into the content now. Can you see the content? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is visible now. The content you can see, right? So PPT is visible. Pardon? Presentation is visible. Uh, what what the, uh, now it says uh, now the PowerPoint says uh, contents. Did you see the contents? Yes. Okay. I can I can. Uh, uh, so 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 as I uh, mentioned earlier, I will be giving you some introduction. Yeah. Followed by the various uh, solar technology, uh, available solar cooling technology that's available that can be used for, for with in, in in cooperation with solar thermal. Yeah? And also I will conclude. Yeah. So. Uh, can you see this uh, this this uh, next uh, uh, PowerPoint? Yes, sir. This is on on the coronavirus, right? Uh, I'm just giving you know uh, telling you that how deep 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 uh, set I am, eh? basically of the situation now. But please maintain uh, your social distancing. Uh, please wash your hand carefully. Eh? I mean uh, frequently, and also wear the mask. This is my advice to all the. Okay, now I'll, I I'm showing now you uh, the, um, the, the my institute. Uh, can you see this? Yeah, this. Hello. Can you see this uh, picture now? Uh, showing. Yes, the, okay. Now I now I'm confident that I can go on. Eh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So we were established in the year two zero zero five. Yeah. 
and uh, we uh, uh, but to date yeah, we have produced almost uh, almost 60 phd students yeah. uh, we started our program uh, we only produce a masters and phd student yeah. and our uh, area of research yeah, uh, as follows yeah we are into advanced solar cell namely all the three types of the solar solar cell uh, the silicon the advanced uh, sorry the, the thin films and the organics and uh, we are also doing on uh, solar thermal which include heat pump uh, solar heat pump uh, solar uh, drying as, as well as solar cooling system yeah, they are we are doing on material aspects of building on low energy architecture on urban ecoscape on advanced power system we have a, a car here and i noticed that you, you know, the college has also a car <laughs> and then we have a, 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 a we do on biodiesel namely from jetropa uh, and then uh, advanced uh, uh, heat transfer and heat flow in uh, in energy systems, and the also the PPT is not visible. Sir, sorry, the PPT is not visible. No, no, not visible now. Yeah, PPT is not visible. Okay. Um, the others. Sir, actually, PPT visible, sir. Actually, two <laughs> screens are available in the name of uh, Kamrudin. So you have to pin presentation I... screen. Can you see my presentation now? Yeah, yes, sir. Presentation is visible, sir. It says research area, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, research area. Ah, presentation so, is not visible. Not visible, sir. Presentation is not visible. Ah, okay. So some, some, actually, some cannot see. Sir, sir please yes, pin uh, Sophie, yes, Sophie sir. and Sir. Uh, PPD, sir. sir you, have to, you have to pin camera. camera uh, Please so switch on the pin. Two, two screens are available. So you have to uh, pin on the presentation screen. Anyone please uh, switch on the pin. Please click on pin. Yes. On pin, yeah. Yes. No, no, all participants, please uh, click on pin, then PPT will be visible. Yeah, yes, the, yes, for, the participant, for the participant, okay. Now it, it is visible, sir. Now it is visible, clearly visible. Now it is visible. Now it is visible. Now the, is it visible? Yes, it is visible. Yes, it is visible. Okay. All, all, all can see? Uh, Prof. Prof. Mohan Raj, can you, can you see the PPT? Yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. Now it's okay. Now it's okay. 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 Now I will uh, carry on to yeah? uh, We have an um, innovation uh, showcase here that, that basically have our low energy house, our solar drying system, our heat pump. Yeah? some PVT system here, some wind energy system, and some grid connected and standalone system, as well as uh, solar cooling system here. Um, and, uh, okay, can you see this now? The This uh, this is the green innovation park, it says that? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm, sir, going, to yes, play, sir. I'm going to play this. Eh? Maybe you can see it or not. Eh? This is, a, 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 I, I'm an amateur drone, eh? drone operator. So this is me, yeah, here. <laughs> trying to, you know, no, sorry. Um, uh, uh, this is me, yeah, here. Yeah. Can you see the, the, the picture here, uh, the, the, the video clip? Yes, okay, uh, here is our solar energy innovation park, yeah. Uh, it has all the, um, um, the systems, the solar system, the drying system, the cooling system, yeah. And this is located at the main uh, main campus uh, of the university, uh, right at the next to the university. Uh, and here you can see uh, a drone yeah, uh, of a drone picture, a drone yeah, that I, I I operate the drone yeah, basically. Uh, and um, this is a, a non-professional drone operator uh, operating the drone. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, here also we have uh, the tracking. Uh, uh, this is a telecommunication tower that uh, the tracking is done by this 3D tracking. Okay. Okay. Next, uh, uh, I'm go uh, okay. Can can you see now the community engagement? Yes. Okay, Professor Mohanraj, can you see now? Prof. Mohan, Prof. Mohanraj, can can you see this uh, community engagement? Yes, sir. Okay. What one of the one of the thing uh, about about solar is is how to take that uh, things into into the into the community. Yeah. 
if you are successful in doing uh, this, uh, bringing the green energy innovation to the public, that there's something to be for us to be proud of. So in my uh, career as as a, uh, as a professor here, I, I've managed to bring some of the uh, uh, PV. Uh, so for example, PV as cottage industry, you know, uh, looking into solar drying system for marine and agricultural product, and also pico hydro systems for rural communities. Okay, um, I now I go into the uh, the energy resource. Now, we are divide the energy resource into direct solar, namely the photovoltaic and thermal. And then you have the stored solar, which is uh, the renewable as well as the non-renewable by uh, of fuels. And then you have the indirect solar, for example, the wind and the hydro. Yeah. And what we are going to focus today is basically these two, yeah, because these are the things that basically run the, 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 the system that we are, we are, I'm going to show you today. Yeah. Of course, if you look into the, uh, the photovoltaic cell, 90% of the market is the silicon solar cell, followed by the thin film, namely the cadmium territe and CIGS. And then the last is the organic solar cell, but the organic solar cell is not in the market yet. Yeah. And, um, and then for solar thermal system, of course, eh, you, you know this, this is the flat plate collector, the evacuated tube, and as well as the unglazed collector. Eh. Now, uh, now, if you look at this particular diagram, yeah, this diagram shows you the, 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 the yellow diagram shows you that the annual uh, uh, solar radiation on Earth's Earth surface is over 10,000 times the total global energy consumption. Now, if you take that particular dot here, eh, a small, this small dot here, this is actually the total global energy consumption, consumption which is less than the entire uh, uh, in one hour. Yeah? So we, ha we have a lot of potential for solar energy uh, globally. Now, uh, going into uh, a little bit of introduction on the energy use in buildings, uh, in an, uh, uh, air conditioning or heating, ventilated air conditioning contribute almost forty to forty-five percent, basically of the usage of uh, and of the usage of energy for for building. Yeah? And uh, the rest are, you know, thirty-two percent in the transportation sector as well in the in the uh, sorry in the industrial sector and twenty-eight uh, percent in the. But if you look only uh, on on uh, on H HVAC, uh, the, uh, we we look into about uh, forty or fifty in the building sector itself. Now globally, uh, if you look global, yeah, the global package air conditioning market. Yeah, uh, for this is for the year twenty sixteen. But if you look at the way uh, forward, yeah, the Asia Pacific region, yeah, including India, the Asia Pacific, everything. Yeah, uh, that is going to be the major market in the future, yeah? followed by the, the, the Americas and so on. Yeah? Now, if you look at this again, yeah? these are the big players yeah? in the uh, York, yeah? LG, uh, GRI, Media, Haya, Mitsubishi, and Daikin. Yeah? And actually, York bought over, uh, 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 was bought over by Johnson Control. So now, York and Johnson Control are the same. Yeah? So you can see that the largest market yeah? that we expect by the year 2020 to 23. The, the fastest growing market is actually the Asia Pacific region. Yeah? Okay, uh, can you see uh, the, the PowerPoint? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, now I'm going to go to the technology per se, yeah? uh, to the solar technology. Now, if, if you look into uh, uh, applications, we have application of air conditioning. So the temperature is between uh, sort of 50 to 20 degrees. Then you have for, for food, for vaccine storage, yeah? for example, you want to carry the vaccine storage to another town or something, you, you, you need also refrigeration. Yeah? So, so for that, it is the, 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 the range of temperature is as shown in this picture. And of course, you have freezing. Yeah? For freezing, so you have much lower temperature. So now the technology available, the refrigeration cycle available, yeah? available in the market now, are the following. Desiccant, ejector, Rankine cycle, absorption, adsorption cycle, chemical reaction, thermoelectric, and vapor compression, the one that we are very used to, and finally the Stirling cycle. Now, in this particular presentation, yeah, uh, I, then, then one more thing about it is that some of it uh, are heat driven and some of it are electricity driven. For example, the vapor compression is electricity driven. So, having a, uh, what do you call it, uh, the uh, um, a compressor, which is uh, uh, we call it a soft starter, uh, soft starter compressor, would enable you to basically use uh, PV yeah, to run uh, the compressor. 
uh, but uh, because because PV has low low current, eh? so uh, but you can basically add them up eh, to have enough current to run eh, uh, the system. Uh, but it's not uh, they are available in the market, but they are not often overly uh, found and of, not not oftenly used. Eh? But uh, uh, what I'm going to look into eh, because, because this is all run by by heat. Eh? This uh, heat is the major major driver for it. Yeah? And this, uh, the electricity is the major driver for it. Today, uh, in the presentation today, I will go into the following, into the five, yeah? into the desiccant, the ejector, the absorption, the absorption, and the vapor compression. Things that I've done some some experiment with it. So not, not, I mean, some of my uh, PhD students has done about it. And we'll, we'll look into what the way forward for this, yeah? the way, way forward for this. Yeah? We go into the vapor compression cycle. Now, the, the vapor compression cycle is, is quite common to many of mechanical engineering students. Yeah? Because basically you have uh, the compression stage, you have the condensation stage, and then you have the throttling stage, and as well as the evaporation stage. Yeah? So in the compression state, uh, basically the, the, the refrigerant here uh, is uh, basically, com uh, is, it enters the compressor uh, in the, uh, of a, a refrigerant yeah? under low pressure and having uh, low temperature. And then it is compressed basically as uh, adiabatically, yeah? so that the leaf, the fluid that leaves uh, this particular uh, outlet of the compressor is under high pressure, and high pressure before it enters the condenser. And here you can see uh, it's a condenser. The condenser is actually in contact with uh, the hot reservoir, uh, and uh, and of course you will release heat from here. And later, basically, you will, uh, the liquid refrigerant, eh, basically, uh, uh, is basically food push, eh, becomes liquid refrigerant, and it's pushed, basically, uh, in a throttling valve and constant enthalpy process that basically uh, will re reduce it eh, more and expand it eh, to become uh, a, a more fluid, and then goes into the evaporator. And this uh, low pressure, uh, low temperature refrigerant enters this evaporator, which basically in contact with the cold reservoir, and because of this, uh, you can have low, low uh, the, the refrigerant will be able to boil at low temperature, and of course, uh, liquid uh, so absorb heat here, and you have, you produce the chill effect over here, and the process is repeated. And here you can see that electricity can be used to run the compressor, and uh, of course, there are limitation to this because the current produced, but this is not high, yeah? so so you have to arrange it. But of course, as I said earlier, there are uh um what do you call it advances in uh, soft soft starter uh, soft starter low current compressor that you can basically uh, use it yeah? okay now how do we measure of course you have seen this before this is a coefficient of performance uh it basically uh, tells you the desired what desired output that you want here and your desired output is your cooling and your required input is basically the the uh, from the uh from the compressor yeah? COP for, for this system is, is, is very small, from 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.6. Yeah? That's not uh, high COP. Yeah? So look, there are a lot of room for improvement for this particular. But uh, we go back, uh, the next one is the absorption cycle. Now, the absorption cycle uh, is actually not new. Uh, if you look at the old uh, refrigerator before, yeah? that uses a, a small fire, eh? basically, to start uh, the refrigerator. So you can see that uh, uh, this absorption cycle is basically, um, th if you look at this, the whole thing here, the whole unit here is the compression process. And the compression process is not through the one that we see earlier, uh, which is through, um, what do you call it, electricity, yeah? through com to, to, to run the compressor. But here is thermally driven. So what happened is that uh, this you, you have a generator, and the generator will have a mixture of uh, basically two, 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 two substances, yeah? either ammonia, ammonia water or lithium bromide water. So these are the two pair that has been used uh, widely yeah? uh, for that. And then uh, what happened is that when you um, uh, when you heat it, uh, especially between seventy to eighty degrees, yeah, you when you heat that. Uh, uh, solution of mixture, uh, the, the 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 vapor will be released. The vapor will basically basically goes into into the condenser, and this is what we call the strong solution. 
and the weak solution will be basically channeled uh, to the absorber. Yeah? And, and later, you can see that the vapor will become liquid and release the heat to the environment. And then uh, this uh, liquid passes through again, eh, the expansion valve, and hello, will be used to cool chill water into the evaporator again, eh, here. And of course, this low pressure again, eh, this is the, um, the, the ammonia vapor leaving the evaporator enters the absorber. And this basically provides that cooling effect. Eh? Uh, and that, that's the reason why, yeah, the, the, uh, because the weak solution uh, will enter the, uh, the, this absorber uh, here because the, the 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 ammonia, liquid ammonia here, and uh, okay, the water here and the ammonia, they will meet again. They have affinity to each other, and this process is known as absorption, and this basically produces the chill effect uh, of, of of the of, of the system. Yeah? And then this liquid is pumped again. So when you have this, it is a continuous process. Yeah, for for this is a continuous process, and uh, you can see that this is basically the, the the concept of the absorption cycle. The process will be repeated yeah, as long as there is enough tem uh, uh, temperature, and the temperature is about seventy to eighty degrees. Then this uh, uh, will, will occur. Right? And uh, for for uh, uh, for the solar absorption cycle. What you have here is actually a solar collector. It can be flat plate, it can be evacuated tube, as long as the heat source is between more than 80 degrees. Yeah, between 70, 80 degrees, then you can you can basically run the system. Yeah. Again, it's, it's the same thing. Uh, in the generator, you have a mixture of uh, ammonia and water. So the ammonia will go on this side, the water will go on this side, and therefore they will meet yeah, at, at a lower pressure uh, at the absorber, and the process is basically pump again uh, to the condenser and this will be repeated for this yeah? now in a solar collector system of course there is intermittency therefore the solar system need to have a what is known as a, a backup heater yeah? uh, basically to to run it 24 hours a day so therefore most of the system we call it uh, we is known as a solar uh, what we call solar assisted uh, cooling system yeah? <coughs> um, uh, what are the improvement that you can do? You, uh, if you add ejectors here, bef after the the generator, and uh, be after the condenser, before the expansion valve, eh, you will be directing this to a flash tank. Therefore, the the use of these ejectors and this flash tank will basically minimize, uh, uh, lower the area of the solar collector. So for, therefore, you, you basically need to have less energy uh, to, to run the system. Yeah? Uh, and these two ejectors have been introduced yeah, in the absorption cycle to improve the condensation process through the utilization of uh, the, the energy from the high side, yeah, going from here to the high side. And we, 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 we have uh, uh, a system which basically have a much higher COP. Yeah? Now, <clears throat> This is actually the, the system that uh, we developed, yeah? uh, one of my students did. And uh, the, the schemat, this, this system shows the, uh, there is a secondary ejector here. And there's two ejector here, uh, working under intermediate pressure of the flash tank here. And then uh, you can see that the, to perform the separation, the, the generator is usually, is used where heat, heating of the strong solution at a boiling temperature. Here is the generator. Eh? This is the collector, and then we will then the the vapor is cool. Eh? Basically, is cool uh, at the rectifier. Uh, the where the um, the second part of the resolution, which basically we will uh, do the pumping for this. Yeah, up eh? here, you can see that the uh, here um, with with uh, in addition to the vapor from the condenser, the en energy consumption of the generator will be reduced as a result of the internal recovery of the condenser. So now at this uh, rectifi rectifier, we uh, the two e ejectors eh, basically uh, receive high uh, primary uh, high pressure uh, ammonia vapor, while the secondary uh, ejectors uh, inlet receive the low uh, pressure ammonia, and you can see this from this uh, state uh, 10, 10 B and six uh, and, and and six uh, and of course also at the flash tank eh, uh, here uh, at six C. So uh, 
therefore you can see that um, uh, both both vapor mix uh, with the primary flow from the reactor and of course in the mixing chamber and uh, then it passes through uh, the what you call the diffuser bef before it uh, enters the the, uh, the uh, sorry before it enters the condenser again uh, which is here yeah and um, uh, part of the vapor with uh, part of this 17b here pass through the rectifier which pass through the rectifier yeah uh, uh, pa pa uh, partially uh, uh, cooling cool, uh, cool, uh, cooling partially uh, the saturated vapor and during this process the water vapor content reduced to a minimum uh, you have partial condensation here yeah? water is cool such uh, to such an extent that uh, the water later condenses and then you have reflux of the condenser and on top of the rectifier uh, basically you have the re returning parts of the uh, condenser the condensed liquid then flow through the flash tank it, um, and i think it ba basically reduces the pressure and separate the uh, the flash vapor again flash vapor here and then uh, 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 the liquid ammonia flow through the throttling valve basically and through the throttling valve here and, and then uh, goes into the evaporator again yeah so this is uh, uh what we we the experiment that we did and we look at the, um, to understand more and then you can see that this is actually the the ph diagram for this eh? the ph diagram for this so uh, the ph diagram for all of this is shown in the following for the low low pressure the intermediate pressure with one cycle and even with dual cycle i mean this you you can operate this with the dual cycle and the uh, and, and and the and, and the and the single cycle yeah single sorry with one with one uh, ejector and with two ejectors yeah uh, therefore the, the the use of this uh, will decrease the heat power the heat power requirement in the generator itself so therefore increasing the cop now, uh, if you look at the COP of this uh, with uh, generator temperature of about 70 to 85 here, you can see using the basic cycle, you will have this uh, uh, distribution of uh, the, the value of the COP with using a single ejector, only with one ejector, we have this. And if you use with uh, ejector in a flat tank, you have a much higher set COP. Yeah? Now, this is an experimental rate and uh, this is the experimental setup so in this experimental setup we have three ejectors to test w whether 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 uh, whether you have three ejectors is good or not but we know the answer eh? the, the 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 optimum is only two ejectors you can you cannot have more eh? so these are the experimental setup that you have uh, we use this um, evacuated tubes yeah? and uh, these are the parts yeah? uh, the rectifier the uh, uh, the flash tank is here uh, and then um, here are, we have 40 evacuated tubes, collector area of about uh, 8.6 meters, volume of storage of about 0.6, and the uh, heat delivery uh, to the generator is about uh, 8, uh, 8 to 5 kilowatt for that. And uh, this is the process of basically installing, uh, assembling the system uh, from assembling of the ejector to basically, uh, 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 you know, carrying by hand basically yeah, to 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 basically assemble it in in, in a in a experimental setup now looking at some of the results if this is the generator temperature uh, you you can you can basically analyze it using the ejector just only ejector ejector and the flash tank and with two ejector with the flash tank uh, the evaporator temperature for only the ejector you will have this temperature distribution for, uh, with uh, this generator temperature but uh, with the uh, addition of the flash tank the much lower but with the addition of two ejector with flash tank you basically can have lower temperature the evaporator can be as low as about 12 degrees uh, uh, which is actually suitable for the use of air conditioning system now uh, as far as the cop is concerned the coefficient of performance you can see that uh, adding uh, at, at this particular, uh, this is experimental COP. Uh, you can see that um, uh, a COP of uh, 0 0.45, nearly 0 0.5 is reached eh, by using the two ejectors with the flash tank. Okay, and then uh, here's, uh, um, here's some of the techno-economic analysis because uh, this, is, this is not, uh, the, uh, because we are doing the experiment, so we, 
we we also put the the the, the cost of the experimental setup. If the cost of the experimental setup is much more uh, expensive than the, if you go for commercial. But if you look at this, you can see uh, a decrease yeah, basically in the payback period yeah, for uh, for using the the, the dual cycle. Yeah. It, uh, uh, re relatively, yeah, you can see that uh, it it will uh, uh, the the use of the uh, flash tank and ejector will basically reduce uh, the time, uh, the payback period for the system uh, by by maybe, let's say, 40%. Yeah? Uh, okay. And then uh, you, you basically can do, I, I show you not a compact design, but there is an uh, artist illustration. Yeah? Basically, you can do it more compact. Yeah? Uh, so because the, the problem with this uh, absorption cycle is bulky. Bulkiness is the problem, yeah? uh, but uh, when you go for small system, bulkiness is an issue as compared to the vapor compression uh, because you have more components. And in, in addition to that, you have a solar collector. Uh, but if you go for, let's say, a higher COP, more than 100, so the system is as, as, as comparable in size. But for the smaller system, less than 10, so the issue of compactness is, is an issue when you do look at the design of the system. Yeah? And... Uh, um, for for those students eh, who are interested to to go more eh, for this, uh, here are some of the enhancement. Eh, but basically, if you want to do, if you look into this system, eh, your heat source can be <coughs> uh, uh, either this from an uh, evacuated tube or this. Eh. So you can see that uh, if you have uh, a few uh, enhancement features, eh. for example, <coughs> if you basically uh, enrich the refrigerant with additive, you can have about 10 to 30 percent increase in uh, uh, COP. And uh, you have nano nanoparticles, this that, that will increase the heat transfer, you can have this particular efficiency. And for the lithium bromide system, yeah, if you look, you look into serial parallel flow and so forth, you can see these are the resulting uh, 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 increase in the, the resulting COP. Yeah? Uh, and then if you look into uh, doing something on the uh, distillation column, doing something on the SHE you know, and the RHE, you can see using, using here how, <coughs> sorry, uh, uh, basically you will increase the, 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 the enhancement. Yeah? Yeah. So here are some of the, here, here if you, you know, I can share you this uh, PowerPoint. Anybody who wants to look into uh, which area of research that they want to go to, to increase the COP. Okay, uh, this is what I'm doing. Actually, the one that uh, if you look at those uh, is, is the one that uh, we are doing. But the rest are just from the literature review. Now, the next is the adsorption cycle. Yeah, the absorption cycle is between gas and uh, and liquid, whereas the adsorption cycle is a solid to to gas. Yeah, it's solid to gas. Now, it's quite uh, uh, until now I have difficulty in trying to explain uh, the adsorption cycle. Yeah? So uh, what we have here the, in the absorption cycle is actually uh, two adsorber, two adsorber. The, the, the rest are the same. The two adsorber here, what you do is basically um, uh, to look into uh, uh, because one will will be uh, uh, active, yeah? the other will be uh, inactive and has to be regenerated. So, so the, the re re regeneration is done through solar. Yeah? So this is a basic cycle of, uh, uh, of uh, what you call it, an adsorption cycle. Yeah? Uh, it has mainly, uh, mainly four components, yeah? basically. The hot water system, yeah? which is this um, solar collector. And then you have the cooling water system here. Yeah? And then you have also the chill water system, which is here. And of course, you have the refrigerant, yeah? the refrigerant in this. In this. So, so the main components are, as you see from this, are again yeah, the evaporator, uh, the condenser, uh, the absorption bed. Yeah, two absorption bed here, uh, and of course the pumps, uh, the cooling tower. Yeah, here you need the cooling tower here, yeah? and then uh, also the expansion and all the throttling valve. Yeah. So uh, the system has basically two two parts: yeah? the sub component and the absorption cooling. Yeah? So all, the rest are the sub component and the absorption cooling is here. Yeah? Uh, the solar powered, uh, okay, you, you can do a lot of simulation of this using uh, using this, yeah? using uh, a lot of this. Uh, now, we, we look into what happened. Yeah? Okay, 
Uh, in the basic cycle, eh, uh, okay, be before that, eh, you, you have uh, valve A, B, C, and D. Uh, now, if you look at uh, when in the first adsorption cycle, adsorption cycle, first backseat one, valve B and valve D are closed. Uh, uh, sorry, valve B and C are open. So when you open valve B and uh, and and C, and C B and C is open. So they they just go this way, yeah. And then uh, valve A and and D, uh, sorry, valve A and uh, D are closed. Yeah? So, so this this is the first in the first uh, 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 cycle. In the second, so uh, absorber A is heated and dissolved uh, refrigerant uh, vapor flows into the uh, condenser and uh, and is condensed into the, into into liquid. Yeah? So and then absorber B is cooled by cooling water and absorb the refrigerant vapor from the evaporator wherein the refrigeration basically is realized here. Now, in the in the, the first half is finished while the absorption is saturated and the, the, the desorption is completed. Now, and then the, in the basic second cycle, absor absorber A is cool for absorption and absorber B is heated for desorption. So the heating is basically uh, uh, done yeah, uh, by... So, uh, this is uh, basically our uh, system that we uh, designed at our, our uh, by one of the PhD students here, here. Uh, and uh, it has the two beds yeah, again, the condenser, the evaporator, uh, the hot water tank, and so on from an evacuated tube. Yeah. So this system uh, receives its uh, uh, hot water basically from the evacuated tube into the hot water tank, and we have bed number one and bed number two. This this process are intermittent, your con so your control strategy has to be very, very good for this. Yeah? So, and then you have the cooling, the condenser here, the cooling tower, and we have a vacuum pump here, basically. And then we have the evaporator here. And of course, now from here, you can have the AC system, and the cooling is from here. Now, this is how it looks like. Yeah? So these are the two uh, absorb absorption, uh, absorption bed, two here. And you have the condenser here and the evaporator here. And um, next, you can see eh, this is the this diaphragmatic that I'm shows you. This is the hot water, so this is the COP of the system, and this is the cooling capacity uh, uh, as opposed to the, uh, the the temperature for this. Uh, and then you can see here is the cooling water temperature. And you can see here the cooling capacity and the COP uh, for the system. Now. Of course, you can see that there is a, in this particular diagram, uh, there is a discharging and charging yeah, of this. So therefore, you can see that the temperature profile of bed number one and bed number two. Yeah, uh, You can see uh, this dotted line is the profile of the temperature for bed number one, number two. This is for bed number one. And this is the outlet, sorry, the spelling here, the outlet uh, chill water. And you can see the outlet chill water here as is about between 20 to about 16 uh, degrees C. Uh, and you can, and this is for 10 minute cycle with five minute switching time. Yeah? And you can see the delta chill is about 4.7. Now you can see uh, five minute without the switching time. Uh, you can see that uh, um, we didn't get the high temperature here. Uh, but you can see uh, that the, the bad uh, temperature is actually and the bed temperature of number one and number two, you can see here. Uh, this means that basically the, the, the direct switching between the cold side and the uh, hot side. You can see here, eh, basically, that the outlet temperature here can reach until the temperature of 21 degrees, eh, 21 degrees. Now, the, the next cycle is the desiccant cycle. Now, there are two types of desiccant. One is a, a solid desiccant. Uh, the other one is uh, what we known as um, uh, uh, what we call it uh, a, a liquid desiccant. Yeah? So uh, there are two major systems, yeah? uh, as I mentioned earlier. One you have the solid solid desiccant. The other one is the liquid desiccant. So I'm going to show you the the two types of uh, solar system, uh, solar thermal system that uses both. Yeah? I I like the desiccant, the dry, uh, the solid desiccant more than the liquid desiccant. Yeah? Uh, but of course, there are advantage and disadvantage to both of it. But before we, we go into this, eh, uh, the, the, 
the idea of uh, 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 a desktop system is is this. Okay, this is a solid desk. Yeah, a solid desk basically you have uh, you you have uh, uh, basically um, uh, it, it works on the principle of uh, uh, three principles. Number one, that the humid outdoor air enters the condition and and, and then pass through what it, uh, sorry uh, you you have this uh, this system. Yeah? This is actually uh, hum this is a dehumidifier. You have processed air coming here and then you have dry air from it. Yeah? So hello, pardon? Hello. Okay. Yeah. And then yeah, this is how the desiccant is built for efficiency. Uh, you have pure crystalline desiccant embedded in woven woven substance, and then you, you basically have uh, pure molecular sieve desiccant that is commonly bonded into the substance, and then you basically into the desiccant uh, uh, the desiccant. You impregnate the desiccant, eh? the desiccant impregnate into the substance, form into tightly woven eh? uh, wheel, uh, wound wheel that contains more pure desiccant. Eh? And you can see that this is how it looks like. And then you, this is uh, the, the configuration of this, uh, the wheel. It has an outer plate, a skeleton, uh, a, a driving uh, a bearing, and also uh, ro ro uh, what do you call it? Roto. roto eh? So the desiccant is basically. Eh? The, is 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 uh, is 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 actually the, the the heart of this humidifier is actually the desiccant, yeah. And of course, there are many research is done into a non-chemical based desiccant, yeah. In 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 my uh, faculty, some 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 someone is using uh, uh, a researcher is looking into green desiccant such that uh, the the palm oil fiber yeah, as as the desiccant. And now. One important thing about uh, uh, this uh, desiccant system, if you have to understand the psychometric chart, yeah, because what we do is that we want, I think most of us in mechanical engineering, this is actually our bread and butter, we know this. Yeah? So what I'm going to, 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 to go here is that uh, in order to achieve what is known as thermal comfort, so there are specific temperature, there are specific uh, uh, humidity uh, that we have to reach. Yeah, of course, this is a psychometric chart. It gives you, uh, it's the, the only chart yeah, that basically gives you one, two, three, four, five, six, six parameters yeah, for you look to, to actually uh, tell whether or what are you, whether you are comfortable or not. Yeah. So now, if you look at the, this, yeah, you can have this process yeah, because when you have this process, this is known as humidification because you are putting water into it. I think everybody knows this at a constant uh, temperature. Yeah, the dry bulb temperature, the temperature that you measure from uh, the, the the thermometer. And then you have uh, uh, this is the called the dehumidification process. Of course, this is a cooling process yeah, because uh, the, the the temperature gets uh, um, lower here you know, in in the in the in the psychometric chart. And then you have the heating process without any addition of uh, moisture. Now most of our things yeah most of our process is actually this way it means that we need to cool and we need to dehumidify we need to cool for example we need to cool down and we need to basically remove some water vapor in the uh in in, in the room yeah? in, in in the environment that we want to cool so therefore you will achieve what is known as a comfort level and you can find this comfort level in uh, ashray uh, manual and so forth yeah so the 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 uh, the aim is basically to get into this uh, comfort level so by basically um, modifying the content of the water in the uh, in the air yeah? and also uh, to cool it down so this is how we do it now this is a, a basically a, a desiccant system how it looks like is different is this you have process number one, process number two, three, four, and it goes into the house. From the house, it will be exhausted out from five to six to seven to eight and to nine. Now, here are the process from one to two. You go through a desiccant, and the, the, it will be uh, the, the the hot water, the hot supply of this will come from heat, which is about seventy degrees, and of course, this you can get it from the solar electric. Now, if we look in the psychometric chart, yeah, we started from one, 
And this is about, let's say, 45 degrees C or 35 degrees C. This is common uh, uh, the, the temperature during the summer, common ambient temperature during the summer. We take it out here. We go into this, we have hot dry air, and then we go from, from one to two, from one to two, is basically a process whereby you, you add, uh, you, you, you take out the water from it, because this will take out the water. From one to two, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a dehumidification process, yeah? Uh, but a heating process, to two, it's heat, heating process. We heat it. And then from two to three, it's actually a process whereby you don't remove any, uh, to, uh, any uh, but it is a cooling process. It's a cooling process from two to three because the cool come from this, the number six and seven. Three to four, three to four, we, we got our our number four is the the the, the uh, condition that we want in our room. Yeah? For example, for this is about uh, maybe here twenty degrees and a much lower relative humidity as opposed to this. Yeah, and then number five here, and then it goes to number five. The outlet from here go to number five. Five will go. Will, will, there is a uh, dehumidifier, whereby we will go into a hundred percent relative humidity, and from six to seven is a process of uh, heating without any addition of heat, and then seven to eight is actually heating from the solar, and then from there we take it out. Yeah? Sometimes we sometimes what we do is that because. Because this 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 uh, this air number nine is is much less than uh, if you look at the air at number nine as opposed to number one, uh, this is already humid air. Just throw it out. Yeah. So this kind of system we 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 we, we, we usually doesn't have the recycle to it. So this is how it looks like. Yeah. Um, it is actually like a box of compartment. Yeah. Uh, and then we have the solar evacuated tube to to give that particular temperature. Yeah? The inside of it is look looks something like this. Now, uh, uh, I, I I have the uh, this is uh, and then we we did a transit simulation, basically looking into uh, various configuration. For example, uh, we did simulation study on uh, solar desiccant cooling with ventilation mode. For example, this is the solar drying system. Uh, the air goes into here, goes into the house, and there's there's, there's no no recycle for this. This is Taking it out just once through, uh, so we simulate this. This is the system that I have for my experiment, and then uh, you have this system is solar desiccant cooling in recirculation and uh, what we call it uh, 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 recirculation mode. So you have this air uh, going, sorry, air ambient going in, yeah, and then basically uh, we we have this uh, uh, the air here recycle back yeah, to this yeah. so this is solar desiccant cooling in recycle and mode schema schematic and then you have a simulation yeah, with regards to two stage uh, desiccant cooling ventilation system and then you have the uh, figure four here showing the two stage desiccant cooling uh, with recirculation yeah. one with ventilation mode the other with recirculation mode and we we, we, we study the, the, the need and here are some of the results. Here is the psychometric chart for it. You can see here showing you the, 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 the similar diagram that we have earlier. Uh, one is the inlet, yeah, followed by number four, which is the outlet. So you can see that number four here is in the suit, it's about 22 uh, degrees, uh, 21 degrees, 22 degrees, and about uh, a much lower relative humidity than number one, yeah. So here you can see all the regeneration process and everything, yeah. And uh, this uh, in, in this stage two, you, you you can see yeah, uh, what are the COP yeah for this? Here are the COP for this. Uh, then you can see that the COP for this is about uh, zero point six five, and the solar fraction. The solar fraction here refers to how much is the uh, energy provided by solar. It means that here is about 40% provided by solar, and you have a COP of 0.65. And then we go to the two stage ventilation mode. You can see this is a two stage ventilation mode. Ambient air comes at number one, and then you have the inlet air going at number six. Yeah. So here you can see here are some of the uh, results. Uh, uh, the, if you can look here, you can see that the temperature much lower, yeah, to about 18 degrees at number six coming into the, the room. Yeah. And then you can see that the solar fraction here is about 70%, almost 70%. That means more given by solar. 
and the COP is about 1.06 for this. Now, and upon comparison of all the system, one stage, uh, one stage ventilation, one stage recirculation, two stage ventilation, and two stage recirculation, uh, re recirculation, you can see here, here are the, the COP, and here are the uh, solar fraction. You can see here that the two stage solar, uh, solar uh, has a uh, solar fraction of more than 80%, but doesn't mean that you have more uh, in terms of solar than you have more of the COP, yeah? because you need also to, to recycle things. Yeah? Now you can see that from this uh, four studies, the two stage ventilation system is the best, yeah, because of its high COP uh, for this system. Yeah? Okay, so so uh, uh, now we go into another part of the the the, the second part is the liquid desiccant. So the, the liquid desiccant, eh? the liquid desiccant has uh, basically uh, three operating uh, principles. Eh? Number one is that uh, this is um, it has a uh, the uh, uh, the humid air, the outside air uh, enters what is known as the conditioner here, and uh, um, and flows past uh, a, a film of liquid desiccant, basically flowing here, yeah? uh, uh, and uh, and of course some external surfaces of uh, 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 of the and of uh, of course it flock into the external surfaces of the plate. Uh, the plate are configured as uh, water cool eh, internally, yeah. And uh, you can see you can use uh, 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 plate AC, AC exchanger here, yeah, for for, for both. So th then the air, there is another system which is the air. The air basically uh, flows through uh, the. Uh, uh, as as uh, the, the 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 air is dried as uh, uh, the water vapor from the air is absorbed into the desiccant. So the the diluted desiccant is then pumped into the regenerator here, and basically uh, now the dry air is further cooled down. And you can use any uh, standard vapor compression cycle for 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 the chill effect. Yeah. So uh, and and this is basically the liquid desiccant, and uh, liquid uh, some candidate liquid desiccant. Yeah. Basically, for example, is lithium lithium chloride. Chloride, yeah? Yeah, example, is uh, and also uh, in some instances, calcium chloride is used for the liquid liquid uh, desiccant. Yeah? So you can see here. Eh? Uh, here you can see this is a flow of the liquid desiccant. So now, uh, let, let me try to explain this how uh, we do it. Yeah? Now, in in uh, in a solar cycle, if you look at solar, do you have uh, the number one? It, this is a standard uh, refrigeration cycle. A standard vapor compression cycle, sorry, a standard vapor compression cycle. And then you have here uh, the solar collector system with the heat exchanger. And then you can see the blue line here is uh, the line of the, 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 the desiccant, yeah, the liquid desiccant. And the uh, uh, red line here, which will I will go through later, is actually the uh, the air. And then you have the water, uh, water line. Yeah? So this is the water line going from here to here, this is the water line. So you will heat up the heat exchanger or the storage system here. And then basically this will go through, of course, you have your own control system here and so forth. Yeah? Now, now the air, the air will come through and goes through the heat exchanger and then will basically goes into the regenerator. And then uh, uh, this will basically, uh, you have now a strong solution yeah, by the hot air through this regenerator, you have a strong solution uh, desiccant that basically will go into uh, the evaporator here, yeah, and then goes into the this uh, dehumidifier, and then uh, basically goes, yeah, we call it becomes weak, and then it goes here, and then goes into the condenser, and because uh, the condenser is quite a little bit hot, yeah, and then uh, basically goes into this and this regenerator and of course this will uh, regenerate again yeah? this will recycle re be recirculated again now next is the the ambient air here again comes to this uh, this uh, dehumidifier and basically you goes into the evaporator which is cool and then you have what is known as a cold non-humid air so this is bas the basic system of a, a solar assisted liquid desiccant system yeah? Now this is uh, how uh, the, the experimental setup that we have. Yeah? 
And basically, uh, looking into this, you can see that uh, uh, it has the, the, the it has here the two beds, but there are actually uh, uh, one is a dehumidifier, the other one is a regenerator. Eh? It's similar to the earlier picture that I've shown. Uh, this is the normal uh, what do you call it uh, 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 vapor compression cycle. This is how it looks like. Yeah. Uh, with this, these are the, the the evaporator here, the condenser here. Uh, the the dehumidifying duct, regenerator duct, and some of the solution pumps are here. And here are some of the specifications. And uh, um, this is a system, yeah, because um, we we were asked to basically uh, uh, to to basically uh, the 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 Malaysian climate is about uh, here about tw thirty two degrees C and about um, eighty percent relative humidity. What we want inside here is about uh, 24 degrees C and about maybe 60% relative humidity. So that uh, the idea is to uh, to to have uh, uh, the orchid, the orchid, uh, and the the, the highland uh, we, we, because we have orchid flowers and the orchid flowers is usually uh, planted at the high elevation where the temperature is low and the humidity is quite low. So we try to replicate that uh, particular uh, 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 system, uh, uh, condition in this, uh, what we call as this, this, this greenhouse. Okay, and, uh, oh, sorry, I don't have the result. Okay, now, f finally, the, re the ejector system. Eh? Now, the ejector system, yeah, uh, the ejector system basically has uh, uh, what we call uh, cooling, Cooling and heating system uh, typically use natural refrigerant fluids or artificial refrigerant. Right? And uh, the refrigeration and the air conditioning system are normally driven by electricity, uh, which strongly increase the, the power consumption. Now, the ejector uh, system yeah, uh, provide the compression effect uh, basically to the cycle. Now, there are three uh, basic uh, operation yeah, uh, of, of, uh, of, of this, three basic operation. Operation number one is that the primary flow from the generator enters the ejector, uh, basically f uh, 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 here, and um, uh, the the motif uh, uh, from the uh, uh, from the inlet and increases through a converging and diverging nozzle. The vapor and then the vapor is the entrain into the evaporator. Uh, uh, sorry, the vapor the vapor which is entrained from this evaporator. Uh, which is uh, called the second, uh, secondary flow, eh? and it has a low pressure and low velocity. Uh, that's the uh, the first operation, and then followed by the second operation, yeah? there is a mixing between the secondary flow here, the secondary flow, uh, 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 and the primary flow uh, at the exit of the supersonic uh, uh, nozzle. So the mixing process is usually taken into account, into account a fully mix at the end of this particular. Uh, cham uh, mixing chamber. Now, uh, and finally, uh, of, uh, the third operation for, for this uh, ejector system is that after the short compression process, the speed of the mixture becomes subsonic, yeah, and therefore further reduce the subsonic, the, 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 the diffuser section uh, simultaneously with the mixture is further compressed into the, the diffuser. So this is basically the, the system. You can see, uh, you can use this with a solar system, you have a solar system here uh, that basically have solar tank that goes into the generator. So therefore, you can see that the refrigeration basically is vaporized in the ejector cycle uh, side uh, at relatively high pressure, produce the supersonic velocity in the nozzle, and then lower pressure exit section, and then entrains uh, this entrainment from that uh, evaporator that basically will uh, this entrainment uh, here basically here that will basically you give the cooling effect. Now, this is uh, a typical example of an uh, ejector uh, uh, system. Yeah? The ejector eh, here, here is used to use a, a high pressure motif to compress the liquid suction to discharge at the intermediate pressure. Now, this is a typical ejector section, yeah? uh, this the dimension. And then, uh, uh, I don't know whether this, uh, okay, this uh, sorry. Um, I can't uh, get. It's, it's supposed to be a uh, yeah, but it's okay. Uh, and then uh, we we uh, we we did a small experiment here. Uh, 
uh, we have this exchanger because this comes from solar. And then you can see that uh, we have this ejector system and the normal vapor compression system here. And then when you look at the entrainment ratio, this is the CFD uh, diagram because we need to design the, the proper uh, ejector for it. Yeah? So from this uh, simulation result, you see good distribution is needed to optimize uh, the, the omega. Yeah? And it, we, we see the entrainment ratio of 0.7 to 1.2 is basically uh, it, with, with different uh, condition. It's the best condition for this. Yeah? So you can see here, here are some like, experimental setup. This is the ejector uh, uh, cycle connected to the water to supply heat to the system to drive the ejector by heating uh, uh, the refrigeration, yeah, the refrigerant. And uh, you can see here, here you can see here are the uh, the storage tank as well as the ejector system here. And uh, here are the ejectors. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, the design of the inside, the design of the ejector, the current design is shown in this particular diagram, the dimension and so forth. And here are the experimental rig. And you can see here some of the results. Here are the generator pressure and the internal ratio. You can see that here are the internal ratio plus the generator pressure. So you, you hopefully, uh, your ideal attachment is between you know, uh, 0.6 and 0.7. So you can see uh, here is uh, another internal ratio versus the condensing bar. And this is the COP of the system. You can see as part of the condenser. Yeah? And, uh, and finally, I'd like to conclude. Yeah? for this. Number one is that, okay, you, you have a lot of potential yeah, of using uh, this for actually uh, for India yeah, because our yeah. weather is, 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 is we are hot and cool. Yeah? So all of this cycle, the absorption cycle, the absorption cycle, the desiccant cooling and so forth, you can see some overall uh, COPs are found to be, for example, if you use the absorb, uh, uh, absorption system is higher for if you use this, yeah? if you use the, the double double ejector with a single, single flash tank. And as far as absorption system is concerned, your strategy, control strategy is very important. And then you have this, uh, what do you call it, uh, the desiccant cycle, which I think, uh, I, I like the desiccant cycle eh, more, eh, because I think you can design it very efficiently. It doesn't need a compressor, it just needs a fan and a pump. Or only a fan and a pump and uh, the desiccant wheel, and of course the desiccant wheel can make yourself, eh, uh, you can make it from natural substance. And of course, we see promising um, application for the solar jetting cooling system. And finally, I would like to thank you. Thank you very much, Nick and Andre, for everyone, yeah, uh, uh, for for listening. And I show you a picture of this uh, bear yeah, in the in the in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the North Pole, yeah, saying that even the bear needs solar yeah, energy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much yeah, uh, for this uh, for listening. I'm okay. you can ask me a question, you can ask me now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank uh, you, Professor. Thank you, okay. Professor, for your uh, spending your valuable time with us. Uh, my, my, uh, pleasure. My, pleasure. my pleasure. My pleasure. Always a pleasure to be with uh, with, with, with with people in Combito. You know, <laughs> just the place so much. <laughs> good, uh, good, 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 now, good, good experience. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Professor. So now I uh, request the audience to present their uh, queries. So, we, uh, participants, please uh, share your queries. If, if I can answer, Prof. Prof. Mohan can always answer your question. <laughs> yeah. So, any queries from the uh, participants? Yes, sir. Myself uh, having a query, Dr. Dini I wanted to talk uh, Professor Sopian, sir. Ah. How are you, sir? <laughs> Hello, sir. Uh, myself Hello. also been working in the desiccant cooling uh, field, sir. Yes, please. Positive, uh, you, you can say, solid desiccant cooling field. Uh, during my PhD, I have to go through the number of uh, publications of uh, Dr. Uh, Professor uh, Sopian, sir, and I suggest. Uh, I, I don't have many, I only have a few on, on this again, <laughs> not much. <laughs> <laughs> the number of your papers are there, sir, very good papers. We are just uh, one of the respectable professors uh, uh, for me, you can say, guide or uh, just I take inspiration from. 
sir my question is which are uh, currently use uh, list latest solid basic and let me go regenerate uh, nearly to the ambient condition just around 40 to 50 degree centigrade yes the, the question is uh, pardon me yes sir which yeah. are sir, uh, currently used the solid basic and that may get regenerate uh, nearly to the ambient condition you can oh, say okay. 40 to 50 degree centigrade There, there, are, there are many, 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 um, many, many chemical material for that. Uh, because I'm using only silica gel for 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 mine. Uh, only uh, uh, silica gel, you know, it's one of the desiccant. And then there is another, another very um, uh, vermiculite. Eh? You know, vermiculite. This um, uh, this it has magnesium, um, aluminium, something. Uh, you know, in it. Uh, that is another good candidate for 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 this desiccant. But but try. Try to. Uh, I'm. I'm trying also to develop um, desiccant material from uh, from from palm oil waste, from palm oil. Uh, what do you call it? From palm oil um, uh, fiber. Uh, okay. But we, we haven't. We, we haven't done that. We, we we have one that that, that we trying to make now, but we haven't tested that in the system yet. Okay. Thank you, sir. Today I'm lucky to talk with my hero. Yes, oh, no, no. <laughs> my, my hero is Professor Mahanda. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you are hero for me for my research. The number of your papers are getting cited and to study in deep in depth. I have print out of the number of your papers sir, for my research. Oh, okay, okay. All, all done my good by my good student. I just, I just, I just advise you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, any other questions? So the many questions they are posted in uh, the comments box. So, Professor, can I read the some questions? Please. Uh, so one question is why the cost of uh, PV panels is so high? Oh, cost PV panel not high now. Uh, the cost of PV panel now has reached about uh, uh, 20, 20, 30 US cent per per, okay. per per what? Very cheap now. Okay, but Very still the uh, cost. Uh, Still, but still, the cost of uh, PV panel for uh, some domestic uh, and some agri-based installations, their cost is uh, yes, seems yes. to be high. Uh, uh, payback, uh, yeah. payback needs to be maybe uh, four years, five years. So the mm. sometimes it, for a PV water pumping, it comes around eight years. PV. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's a problem. But I, I, I think PV, uh, if you. Um, Uh, the the PV that, that uh, we, we I think you you are uh, you you are also in your country going for feed-in tariff for for solar farm, the the yes. price for for um, um so, okay when 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 I started to you know become for, uh, uh, we we started to have this program in the year the year two two yeah the year two thousand the cost of the the grid connected system yeah, with PV and inverters yeah. It's about nearly 10,000 Malaysian ringgit, yeah, or about 2,500 USD per kilowatt. Okay. Now the system okay. go by half, by by one one sorry by half by one third. Yeah. Okay. It means that okay. if you go on to uh, the less than less than 1,000, less than 1,000 uh, dollar per 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 per, ki, per 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 kilowatt of of grid connection. So the the the, the over time the the uh, the manufacturing of PV is getting much cheaper. And then uh, um, product from China is actually cheap now. Yeah. So, but but one thing you, uh, I would like to comment on PV yeah, because it depends also on the 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 uh, efficiency. You may okay. get a PV panel which has the low low efficiency, very low price, and you can have PV panel which is high efficiency and then like crazy high price. But the energy yield for that high Price PV panel will be more, so your payback period may be less because you, you your your yield is more, you're producing yeah. more. Yeah. So okay. so you have to do the 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 the, the, the calculation there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh. Okay. So brother, one more question. Yes. So yes. what is the scope of nanoparticles in solar energy? It is another question they posted in the ah. comments. So okay. Good. Yeah. 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 One of the for for the for problem two, is uh, brother. Uh, the problem is. Uh, mm -hmm. The commercial commercialization is a big. Oh. So, so please suggest your uh, opinion on this. 
untuk uh, co co uh, commercialization aspect um, uh, i i um, s s uh, see it's like this <coughs> Yes. When we talk about solar, we, we are talking about solar assisted. We are talking about where where there is need of solar, you use solar. If you do the calculation, you can see that if you have a hundred percent system using solar, you might not get that that economic benefit that you want. Look at the 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 uh, the the second cooling system. When when you when you have, uh, for example, more solar in it, the COP may not be high. Yeah, because you you have um, you you have this diminishing return. Yeah, but yeah. solar is actually used for is 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 to is to complement things. They 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 are not solely. So when you yeah. have solar assisted system, you do the calculation. You can see it's more benefit. Yeah, it's more uh, benefit to have this solar as part of the system as not as only system. So see solar not as total system, but see solar as uh complementing the thing that you have but that's why in my presentation i call solar assisted system yes, yes. i didn't say solar system because you you do totally solar you 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 it's very expensive but if you do something because you you see when there is a need for the solar use the solar then you yes, when yes. you combine the system you see the economics the economic makes sense the life cycle cost analysis makes sense and all of the calculation this makes sense for you to go for a system which is more hybrid yeah, than a standalone uh, one one type of power source okay. that's why i never say that between wind between solar between thermal and between the fossil fuel to me those those energy are not are not in 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 um, in competitive competition with other they are in complementing each other but you know okay. you need to know how to combine that yeah you combine system because number one you will make the environment better number two you will make the cost effective uh, this is what you do so and there are a lot of techno economic analysis that you can apply to to solar thermal systems to solar assisted thermal system to to get the most optimum part so the issue of whether it's commercially viable or not is not that the issue is not how to save the energy how to save the energy and how come how to come with a very uh, cost competitive system and i think we in the mechanical engineering we we have uh, uh, what is cost accounting courses uh, project management courses uh, we can apply that to 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 to, to hybrid system eh, between solar and between uh, the conventional energy to get a better uh, payback period for this system eh? okay okay so sir one more uh, question uh, yes, sir. so what is the lifetime of uh, solar heating and cooling systems ah uh, okay all depends on the material you use uh, okay. as far as the collector is concerned now uh, collector is concerned the collector are now made by people in the building industry people in the uh, uh, b b building industry and usually building materials can last 20 years so this the solar collector should be able to do that <laughs> so yeah, okay. so the issue of uh, whether it lasts long or not is, is the issue but the, the, the of course there are issue of uh, corrosiveness yeah for example for the absorption cycle but for the desiccant cycle i see only the problem of changing the 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 desiccant and that's it the rest are if the the rest they are made from building materials yeah building uh, from from materials that you use in buildings so therefore if the building can last 20 years this material also can last 20 years okay uh, sir one more question sir uh, this uh, which type of pv material you are suggested for uh, uh, cooling or some uh, heating applications pv panels uh, it's a pv assisted uh, systems which oh. type of PV material you are suggesting? Oh, the the, the silicon one. The silicon better. The, the silicon one nowadays they have guaranteed thirty five years, and then efficiency of twenty three percent. Yeah, and then uh, 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 stable performance for the next thirty years. So my suggestion go for the silicon PV. Okay, okay. And if you uh, want to buy, let's say, organic solar cell or something like that, if somebody tell you that organic solar cell is in the market, you, he is the biggest liar. It's not there anymore. Still, still in the in the laboratory. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Sir. <laughs> but okay. it's good for the silicon. And the mono, mono silicon, eh? not the poly. The mono silicon. Okay, 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 sir. Okay, mono is better than poly. Poly is better because more stable. The poly look nice. So if you want to have a nice, nice crystalline shape, you go for for the poly. Uh, okay. But the mono are better, and now the the cost of the mono is much also similar to the before that the the poly is cheaper. Now the mono is cheaper, 
same same price now and uh, one more question sir uh, uh, is it possible to integrate the solar photovoltaic thermal uh, thermal collectors sir uh, collectors with refrigeration cycle uh, yeah yeah you, you, you can you can do it uh, you can do it because um you, we've done it with heat pump before yeah so, uh, so for ref i have not done it with the pv uh with, with the revolution i think if you if you can uh, um, if you can do it with uh with the um, um vapor compression cycle you know is it, is is good because uh, get a low 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 starter compressor eh? and then uh, 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 uh have some some cooling of the the uh, collector and then you can use the 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 the, the uh, the heat to, for any other purposes. Uh, as far as uh, desiccant, yes, desiccant definitely you can use because you need the hot water. You need the uh, the hot water too. Yeah, for this, you need the electricity also. You can run the the the, the fan using the electricity. So desiccant is another good example. But the rest, I'm not sure yet. I have to look into okay. some. some you, you can do. You know, if any do do a simulation of a PVT, you know, what can you do for for the desiccant cooling? It will be very nice. <laughs> okay. So uh, another question, sir. The yeah. use of nanoparticles in solar concentration devices can result in increase in efficiency. Oh yes, please, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because uh, you, 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 what you do is that you, you basically increase the heat transfer, cooling, more cooling to it. But uh, it depends on the which, which can, which material we use for the nanopart nanoparticle. Uh, there are a lot of candidates for it. There is, there is silicon carb carbide. Uh, there is also the, the ferrous, ferrous, ferrous base. And then you have also the the the, the titanium base that's very expensive, and also one important thing you need to put is a, a, a surfactant so that it can flow. It, the, there's no um, stickiness to the flow; it flows well. So surfactant should be there, and of course the process of making the nanofluid should be also because nanofluid you cannot you cannot just mix. You have to go through a process of sonication, and the mixing is done by a sound wave. Yeah, so so we have to go through about eight hours of mixing. For that so that it become part of the fluid yeah. okay so another question uh, is it possible to cool the cooler box uh, for a tomato for storing for storage of tomato using yeah. solar adsorption evaporative cooling in order to maintain high humidity during cooling process and the temperature during the daytime the humidity cannot be done by the by the by by the by the absorption the humidity okay. if you you have the you, you can put a desiccant in it the, in, in the box but definitely okay. for the for the desiccant system you can you can you can control the humidity oh, okay okay sir. and another question sir uh, the, how we can do the solar uh, project simulation uh, oh, is you, there any separate analysis software is there solar the, simulation you yes, you, you, you uh, can you can you can have uh, tra uh, the the software which is available in the market is transis this that's the software that i know of that can use it yes, yes. Uh, so but, uh, but their question is: Is how come we can uh, simulate the uh, solar radiation? Solar radiation availability cannot. It's very difficult. Yeah. In 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 solar simulator, we can suggest. Yeah. In in transis, yeah, they have a database database of every country in the world. Okay. Okay. So so what what transis do is that it will get the raw data, and sometimes satellite data. Sometimes you don't have anything. They can generate it from the satellite data. And then okay, you okay. take the data. You can you can piecewise it into hourly, into daily. That is done by transit. There is a subroutine that can do it. Okay. So uh, the issue of uh, uh, when when I started my PhD long time ago, eh, uh, 30, 30, 40 years ago. So <laughs> it's difficult for me to get the data. But now the, the, the uh, I, what I do is that when I get the data, I need to process it myself. But the, the software can do it for you. They just need to know. The, the monthly 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 average data and the monthly average uh, uh, um, ambient temperature goes into the the software and it will do all the techniques that you you have heard during the past 40 years yeah? stochastic technique statistical technique then they will give you the hourly data for it so and then the hourly data goes into whatever you want to simulate so you will get the 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 the, 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 the hourly data and then this hourly data bring to the next our, the next hour that's why this process program is called transient yeah transient okay. simulation system simulation when i started okay. to use the the, the transient uh, the transis it was just on a on a i have to go to the buy the tape and then put in the cray machine in Pittsburgh. 
but nowadays you can buy your computer can solve it yeah, any okay. any of this gaming computer can can do it <laughs> okay so another question sir uh, how we can mathematically model the behavior of solar devices is any possible devices is any is it possible to analyze the same using some software uh, yes. some yeah as mentioned earlier yeah, transist is the best yes. software for it yes. because okay. transist okay. has uh, uh, transist transist uh, has all the components for example if you have a solar system and you have the, comp the it has the component for the uh, the collector component for the storage component for the valve component for the controlling system yeah uh, com okay. and you can you can you can basically uh, configure them yeah when you configure them you can basically it has its, its mathematical model there but if you don't have it you buy another software the ees software yeah the, yeah. the software, it's then you can, you can you can you can match it. Solver, okay. Yeah. ES is, okay. for example, if you want to do uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, heat pump system, and there is a different refrigerant, refrigerant, then you take the ES to to do it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And another question: uh, In solar assisted ejector cooling system, supersonic speed is achieved. Yeah. Yeah. You have to have that. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay, sir. You 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 design it such that it 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 attain the the supersonic. Okay. You you can't hear it, yeah, but it's it's there. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So there's one uh, there. So these are the some questions that are posted in the uh, no. comments. Uh, no, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, thank you, sir. So thank okay. you, uh, thank you very much for your valuable time for spending your valuable time and no, spending no valuable information. My pleasure. My pleasure. My I think pleasure. Uh, more than. Uh, Nearly 200, part, 200 plus participants that participated and they uh, got benefited out of it. And uh, definitely uh, in future, we may expect your one more presentation, maybe in uh, after two, one month or two months after. We may oh, definitely. My, 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 I, uh, my pleasure. I, I, I love to do it. Okay, okay, sir. So thank you, sir. So thank you, thank you for your valuable information and the valuable time for. Oh, I will give this PowerPoint presentation to Prof. Uh, Mohan Raj uh, to you. That's all. Yes, sir, I, de I definitely, how... sir. If, uh, I don't know how to put it to the participants. Uh, I don't know how to put it. If I can put it in, um, let's say, uh, to, I, uh, okay. If I can, basically insert that in this, uh, everybody can. Yeah? But I'm not okay. sure how to do it here. So, uh, I'll, um, okay. yeah, but, uh, because usually, yeah. This is my first time using this Google Meet. I usually use the Zoom and the Skype. I can, I can, okay. and the team. Yeah? I can, I can attach the here. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I, if I'll, I'll give to you, Prof. Yeah. For this. Yeah. Yes. Okay, sir. I I will I will share. No problem. So I will okay. share this in PPT too. Okay. As a in in form of PDF, you can share, sir. Then I can share it to them uh, in the form of uh, PDF. Yes. Uh, I I I oh I sorry. I I wish I can share my 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 picture, my face. I I have a nice background here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but okay. I I yeah. seems that I can I can have the the camera to to me. Okay. Okay, 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 then. okay thank you very okay, much thank you, thank thank you, you very much for you. listening yeah. uh thank you very much yeah have a nice day uh stay safe everybody please stay safe yeah. thank you thank you sir thank you sir <laughs> so so uh, thank you for the for your participation in the today's fdp so tomorrow we are having a, a another topic on uh, solar uh, assisted heat pump dryers uh so uh, we'll welcome back uh, by tomorrow uh, the tomorrow's uh, sessions thank you Sir, speakers may lady. So, speakers may lady. Hello. So, the speakers may lady, everything I will share uh, in a, in a truth PPT. 
so that in the ppt all the information is available so if you have any clarification any doubt any any clarifications you want you can share your uh, information requirements in the either in whatsapp group or telegram group so we'll uh, we'll do the beginning things Mm-hmm. Yeah. 